All right, so now let's just take a look at the five basic rules of probability. So we've taken a look at the general probability questions, but there's some rules that you just want to make sure you remember as you're working on these problems, and they'll just help you in your setup to sort of give yourself a double check. All right, so number one, just remember the probability of any event is a number between zero and one. So if you get something bigger than one, or you add up your probabilities and they're bigger than one, then you know you did something wrong. All possible outcomes together must have a probability whose sum is exactly one. So if you write out that sample space and then write all of the probabilities that go with your sample space associated with the sample space, when you add them up, they have to be one. If they're over one, then you know you sort of overestimated something, or if they're under one, you know you missed something. If all the outcomes in the space are equally likely, the probability of event A can be found using the formula. So equally likely just means that um, one isn't sort of weighted more than the other. So it's not like you have a coin that's weighted and it's a three-fourths chance of getting heads and a one-fourth chance of getting tails. So remember A is our event. The probability of A is the number of outcomes that correspond to event A over the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So basically what you're looking for over your total possibilities. The probability that an event does not occur, so this is the complement we'll be talking about, is 1 minus the probability that the event does occur. So just remember event occurring and not occurring, so rolling a sum of 5, not rolling a sum of 5, is equal to 1. All right, so those two things together are always equal to 1. If the two events have no outcomes in common, the probability that one or the other occurs is the sum of the individual probabilities. So that's basically like saying like what's the probability that you're going to go to the movies or that you're going to go shopping but there's no outcomes in common you're not going to go to the movies and go shopping at the same time then you just add those two probabilities to get your final answer. And that's something called mutually exclusive. So if they have no outcomes in common, so that they're never occurring together, the probability of A and B occurring is zero. So that's basically like saying there's no overlap. Mutually exclusive disjoint. Disjoint, sort of think of that as like, you know, jointed, not, not jointed together. So they have no outcomes in common. You're either going to the movies or you're going to... Um, shopping, you're not doing both. Think about dice. When you roll two dice, you're going to either get a sum of six or a sum of five, but when you roll a dice, you can't get a sum of six and five at the same time. So that would be mutually exclusive because rolling a six, sum of six, and rolling a sum of five at the same time is not possible. All right, so let's just go over a quick summary of our probability rules. So this is just another way to write that. The probability of event A is between 0 and 1. 0 is the event not occurring. 1 is the event occurring. So think about the weather. Um, probability of 0 that it's going to rain, not going to rain, 100% chance of rain. When it rains, it's actually 100% chance that it's raining. If the sample space, if S is the sample space in a probability model, the probability of the whole sample space is always equal to 1. So you can add up all of the probabilities in the sample space and they have to give you 1. That means you've included 100% of the sample space. Okay? Um, same formula for your probability of A occurring. This C right here, this is your complement rule. So this is just basically like saying the event occurring or not occurring. So this is saying the probability, if A is the probability of getting a sum of five, the complement is not getting a sum of five. So the probability of not getting a sum of five, that's what that C means, is one minus the probability of getting a sum of five. All right, so that C just means you're taking the event and saying the event not occurring. There's an addition rule for mutually exclusive events, so that means that they're not occurring at the same time. If A and B are mutually exclusive, so therefore probability of rolling a sum of six or sum of five, okay, then you just add the two probabilities together. Now there's a key word in here, the fact is or. One or the other is occurring. Probability of rolling a sum of six or sum of five, you just add the two probabilities together. Okay, but this is if they're mutually exclusive, they have nothing in common. You cannot roll a sum of six and sum of five in the same roll. It's not possible. Okay, so let's just see, let's take another example of looking at a probability model. So let's say we're flipping a coin three times. All right, so we flipped a coin once. That one was pretty easy. Describe the probability model for this chance process and use it to find the probability of getting at least one head in three flips. Okay, so let's just make sure we understand the directions. One, 
describe the probability model. So that means the sample space plus the probabilities that are associated with it. Find the probability of getting at least one head in three flips. Okay, try it and see if you can um, get the correct answer. All right, so let's take a look at our sample space. Sometimes it's easiest to make the sample space first, sometimes it's not. So there, if you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. So when I flip a coin three times, I can get heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, so on and so forth. There's eight different ways that when you flip a coin three times, you can get the possibilities. Now take a look at the probability model. Since we're specifically stating get at least one head, in three flips, that's what we're looking at in the probability model. The probability of getting zero heads, one head, two head, three head. Here's the probability associated with that. If we take a look at our sample space, it's easy to find. It's easy to say, okay, three tails, that's getting no heads. Here, there's one, the first, the second, or the third toss, so that's three out of the eight possibilities. Same thing here, two of them. Okay, that's three of the eight possibilities. There's your probability. And getting all three heads, there's only one way to do that. So that's one of the eight possibilities. So if you add these all up together, they should give you one. If they don't give you one, you did something wrong with the probability. Now, now this is easy to find the answer. Find the probability of at least one. So that means at least one means one or two or three. Okay, so that's a little bit tricky understanding that at least one. So basically we want to add those three probabilities because I want one or two or three. Okay, the other way to do that is to say, okay, if I want the probability of at least one, all right, think about this. What's the complement of that? The complement of that is getting none. All right, so remember the event plus its complement equal one. So the probability of getting at least one plus none is equal to one. So oftentimes when we do the probability of at least one, it's easiest just instead of saying one plus two plus three, it's easiest just to get rid of the probability of none because that's looking at one probability instead of one, two, three probabilities. So probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none because think about that, one or two or three, what are we leaving out? We're leaving out this probability here of zero. So if we take that guy out, we're left with what we want. So one minus 0.125 equals 0.875. Get used to this, anytime it's at least one, I would always do one minus the probability of none, just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so basically everything but the probability of getting zero or none, remember probability of none plus the probability of at least one should give you one, so that's why you can use that formula. All right, um, so if we are given a probability model, how will we be able to tell if it's legitimate? Just remember if you're asked, is the probability legitimate? You always want to add the sum of the probabilities to be one. So randomly select a student who took the 2013 AP statistics exam and record the student's score. So here's your probability model. Okay, score they get a one, two, three, four, or five. How could we show that this is a legit probability model? Basically, if we just add up all of these probabilities, they should equal one. Therefore, since it adds up to one, it's legit, all right? This is the whole sample space. Find the probability the student scored three or better. So that's three or four or five, so we have to add those three together. Find the probability that the student didn't get a one. Okay, so what's the probability that they didn't get a one, all right, so probability x equals one complement, so that's basically like saying, what is the probability that they didn't get a one? Remember, the complements mean they add together to get one, so find the probability they didn't get a one, plus the probability of getting a one, this is a lot of ones, is equal to one. So if we take one minus the probability that they got a one, we have what's left because we're asking what's the probability that they didn't get a one. So that's getting a two, three, four, or five. So that's basically adding those up, which is, this is easy to do because you have them right in front of you. But if you didn't have this model in front of you, it might be a little bit more difficult. So probability they didn't get a one is one minus the probability they did get a one because if we get rid of that guy right here, we have left with what we want. So one minus that probability is 0.765. That's your complement rule right there.
Okay, so let's just take a minute and look at two-way table. There's a couple of different ways that we're going to show probability. One is Venn diagram, one's a two-way table, and one is a tree diagram. And you're going to have to understand like when's the best situation to use each. All right, so basically you're going to want to use a two-way table whenever you're not necessarily given like decimal points or probabilities, but when you're just given um, data with like large numbers, like totals basically. Students in a statistics class wanted to find out how common it was for young adults to have their ears pierced. They recorded the data on two variables, male and female, and then they asked them whether or not they had their ears pierced. So j given any sort of table, oftentimes they'll just give you this row, these two rows right here, um, then they won't necessarily give you the totals. But anytime you're given any sort of table in statistics, please take a minute and find the row and column totals first. So find this row, add it up, find this column, add it up, find this column, add it up, find this column, add it up, and then get the total number of people right here. So this 178 means this should add up, your row should add up to 178, and your column. If you didn't, then you did something wrong. So using this two-way table, we're going to answer these three questions. What's the probability that we have a male that ha or someone that has pierced ears, is a male with pierced ears, and is a male or has pierced ears? So go ahead and take a minute and see if you can answer those before we move on to the next slide. Okay, so let's take a look at question A. So we're going to say A is male and B is pierced ears. So each student is equally likely to be chosen. Um, 103 students have pierced ears, that's easy from my column, out of the total of 178. All right, so that's important that you show that fraction right there. Even if you don't show the decimal answer, okay, that fraction's important. So what's the probability that they're male and pierced ears? All right, so now let's look here. Male, here's my male and pierced ears, that's right here. So male and pierced ears is 19 out of the total of 178. Okay, so make sure you show that fraction. And then the last one, we wanna find male or pierced ears. All right, so this is a little bit tricky. That's the probability of A or B. So male or pierced ears, so you have 19 plus 71 is a total of 90, and then you also have this female right here that also has pierced ears. So you're adding 71 plus 19 plus 84 out of the total of 178. Now, just be careful. Why can't I add this column, yes, pierced ears, and yes, male? Okay, if I do that, I'm gonna be adding 140 3 plus 90, which is going to give me a different answer than if I just add 19 plus 84 plus 71. Why? Well, the reason is if you just add this column in this row, this 19 is counted in the 103 and counted in the 90. Remember, I can't, I can't count that twice. That would be incorrect. All right, so just be careful with that. You can't count that twice, so you're just adding up these three probabilities. All right, so go ahead and um, first create a two-way table that displays this data and take a look at the answer on the next slide and see how you did and answer the questions below. All right, so here's what your table should look like. Make sure you have um, totals. Make sure you have uh, labels. All right, so we have high school graduate, not a high school graduate, homeowner, not a homeowner. My numbers are filled into my table. Find the total, find the total, find the total, find the total, 500, this should add up to 500, this should add up to 500. If it doesn't, you did something wrong. All right, so for the first one, 310 graduated from high school, 500 total, boom, there's my probability, okay? 221, there's the intersection of high school graduate and homeowner, 221 out of 500. Did you get this one correct? Okay, high school graduate or homeowner, that you're just adding the 221, plus the 81, that's the high school graduate, plus the 119, that gives you 429 out of 500. Now, you can't just add high school graduate 310 plus homeowner 340 and get the answer. They're not mutually exclusive. So that means 221 are both high school graduates and OMA home. If you just, if you added 310 plus 340, you're going to end up with 650 out of 500. That's wrong because that is a result greater than one. And you're including that 221 two times. You can't include it twice. You can only include it once. Okay, so um, go ahead and take a look at the next video for the next explanation of this table.